Thank you for inviting me here today. Um, my name is Dr. Gregory Levitin. I'm the director of the Vascular Birthmarks and Malformations Program at the New York Eye and Ear Infirmary of Mount Sinai. And today we'll be talking about hemangiomas, their treatments, and other types of birthmarks that people have questions about. Welcome, Dr. Levitin. Um, one of the first things we want to talk about today is what is the difference between a hemangioma and a vascular malformation? Well, it's a wonderful question because for many years, all types of vascular birthmarks were actually called hemangiomas, which made for a lot of confusion because not all birthmarks are treated the same. Uh, hemangiomas are the most common birthmark of infancy. And typically a child is born without the, birth, the mark, but it shows up in the first few weeks after life. And then it strangely it grows for up to one year life, stops growing, and then slowly goes away. But in fact, not all hemangiomas go away, but most of them do. The ones that occur on the head and neck area are actually some of the most prominent ones, and those are the ones that actually don't go away. So the more visible it is, the less likely it is to go away. Now, vascular malformations are also vascular birthmarks, but very different than hemangiomas. Vascular malformations are always present at birth, although not always visible, and they can grow throughout a, a person's life, and they may not become apparent until much later in life, unlike the hemangiomas that show up in that first year of life. So it's so when it comes to just a, a true or false statement of given time, hemangiomas will always fade away and disappear on their own. Your answer is well, it's false. Um, you know, hemangiomas. You can see here at the slide here is a young child who developed a hemangioma very soon after birth. But when she was born, she had a completely normal forehead, and this is one of those examples of a very large one. And in fact, is causing not only significant growth but deformity, you can see how this is actually hooding down. She has to open her eye with a lot of effort to keep that eye uh, open. And what really is showing is the before and after what happens when I can do surgery at an early age to uh, remove the hemangioma and restore it back to really an almost normal appearance. So in general, probably 80% or more hemangiomas go away. And that's actually the, the narrative that too many people assume applies to all hemangiomas when in fact, about 20% of the hemangiomas uh, that occur still need some form of treatment, of which the majority of those, again, are in the visible area of the head and neck region. Um, so what types of treatments are available, and if you can talk about some of the risks and benefits of treating or not treating some of these um, conditions? Sure, well, that's a very good question. That's what brings most patients to the doctor is, my child is born, there's nothing there, and oh my goodness, all of a sudden something is there. And in fact, some of these can grow quite aggressively or quickly and be very alarming to them. So the very first thing we want to do is ensure an accurate diagnosis. As I said at the beginning, a lot of times people assume that all birthmarks are the same or even treat or are called the same, but in fact, we want to define a hemangioma from anything else. Now, once it's diagnosed as a hemangioma, the treatments become very sequential. First, we want to decide, is this something that needs to be treated? If it's a very small lesion, if it's growing slowly, we might observe this over the next few weeks to see if it's one of the ones that needs treatment. Now, what needs treatment? Well, any hemangioma that grows and causes a stain in a visible area, becomes thickened, or a tumor-type growth is something that needs to be addressed. And a couple years ago, the American Academy of Pediatrics said that all children with a vascular birthmark should be referred to a birthmark specialist at, as early as the four-week uh, well baby checkup. So what we're trying to say is that if we're going to treat, we want to treat earlier because it's much easier to control the growth when we start at an earlier age. Now the treatments can be divided into medical, laser, and surgery. The surgery reserved for being last. Now medical therapy has changed a lot. In the past, we had some very strong or toxic medications like steroids or vincristine that would potentially change the growth of the mangioma, but had a lot of side effects. Fortunately, almost 10 years ago, we discovered that propranolol, which is a beta blocker that we use for children with, um, heart, um, with for heart defects or heart medications, can actually re reverse the growth in a lot of hemangiomas. As I said, a lot, maybe about 60 to 70% of the hemangiomas respond well to propranolol. Now, propranolol is given as an oral medication, usually divided into a couple times a day, and can be started as early as five or six weeks of life. Now, when it works, it works great. It can really take a hemangioma that's growing very aggressively and stop that growth, and in some cases, even reverse that growth. Now, during that time, we want to be very critical because we don't want to treat those children any longer than we have to, so if it's one of those ones that's not working, we're not going to treat that for a very long period of time. The second thing we want to consider is laser therapy. Now, laser therapy is used pulse night laser. 
pulse eye laser is very selective to the vascular stain of hemangiomas and also port wine stains, which is a type of vascular malformation. Now the laser therapy is very effective when the hemangioma is relatively flat. So as I said just before, we want to get these to these children as early as possible before it becomes a raised lesion when the laser is not as effective. And furthermore, for one of those more aggressive hemangiomas, perhaps something like this at an earlier age, if we treat with propranolol and laser at the same time, it's even more effective if had we done just one or the other, or even done them at separate times. So it's very important to be uh, evaluated as early as possible to see what treatment options are available. So many of your patients are very young. So, um, and of course, parents have come to you are obviously concerned about the side effects of having birth marks. So if you can talk about some of the um, effects on the development of children with these birth marks and why early intervention is so important. Well, I appreciate that question for a number of things. Um, first of all, uh, we want to uh, help educate our community, and our community is parents, caregivers, and physicians. And in the past, because hemangiomas are not cancerous, even though they may look like a tumor, uh, a lot of people thought that they could just be watched or even waited to, to be treated when this child became a more closer to school age. But that's assuming a child at age five, six, or seven is now getting the first chance at treatment. What I like to emphasize is that not only do we have safe and effective treatments that can be started earlier, even if we need surgery, we can perform that surgery during the first year of life or even by age two or two and a half. And I use that number of age two and two and a half as a critical number because we want to try to finish our treatments by that age, not by the time they reach school. A child develops a sense of self, and more importantly, a, self, a sense of self-awareness in a social setting after age two or two and a half. So as you can imagine, even a child that has a visible hemangioma, if it's treated at an early enough age, and if the child is returned to a normal enough appearance at an earlier age, earlier age they're not going to grow up with a sense of difference or, or having looked different even in a social environment. In fact, I see some of these children many years later, and it's really, really rewarding because they're essentially socially normal. They didn't grow up having to explain or answer any questions about their birthmark. Quite the opposite, they look at the picture of themselves with a birthmark, they don't recognize themselves, they think it's an odd picture of them because their sense of self is whole. They've actually see themselves as, as they are now. So, um, in discussing some of the treatments available for um, hemangiomas and vascular malformations, you talked about lasers and surgery. Are these treatments going to be considered cosmetic surgery and will insurance pay for them? So th that has been a constant problem and for many years that had been the problem that a lot of these were considered uh, cosmetic surgeries. But I like to emphasize cosmetic surgery is taking someone who's normal and altering their normal. Whereas reconstructive surgery is taking someone who might have been born normal, developed something abnormal, and restoring it back to normal. And furthermore, this has been a constant um, um, mission of sorts of, of, of an organization called the Vascular Birthmark Foundation. And so the Vascular Birthmark Foundation for over 20 years has been helping not only to find children and network them into treatment, but also as an advocacy to work with insurances and with the government to ensure that every child with a birthmark is actually insured treatment as a proper and appropriate treatment and not considered cosmetic. And I'll just give you an example of one of these type of cases. You know, this is a child who looks a little bit different. As you can see here on the, le on the left side, there's a picture of her with a hemangioma of the eyelid. Well, this is not only a hemangioma that's of importance because it's visible, it's actually of critical importance for the development of the eye. If this child's hemangioma is left alone, you can see how it covers that eye. That left eye will not develop normally. So not only does this child need to be referred in as early as possible, but in this case, we didn't have the luxury of time to treat with laser or medicine. We need to treat with surgery. And so that's exactly what we did. At age six months, we did surgery. And you can see here, just as a month later, her eye is back to open. It's, this is clearly reconstructive. This was not cosmetic. And these are the kind of examples that I like to show because it's so important that people recognize that even a little hemangioma can cause a big difference in the child's development. And in this case, it was actually uh, life-saving for her vision. Do you have any examples of children being treated with propranolol and laser as well? Yes. Um, this is an example I like to show. Uh, this is a wonderful family. When I see them, it's, it's, a, it's a family affair. Literally, parents and grandparents come with this child. But as you can see, the, this is a fairly large hemangioma. It's affecting the lower eyelid. It's not pushing onto the eye. So we have this window of opportunity, like, let's see what happens. And this was an example where we started, obviously, at a very early age, before three months. We started him on the oral medications, but we quickly started him on the laser therapy. 
Now the laser therapy helps to treat the surface layer while the propranolol works on the deeper layer. But that combination of two within just over uh, eight or nine months, this is a child, I saw him maybe a couple months ago, it's about 95% clear. There's still a little discoloration, but this is not someone who walks on the street and gets a second look as uh, passerbys go uh, look at him. He's actually a very normal looking child and also, again, well before the age of two, well before he develops a sense of, of self-awareness of how things um, might have been had left alone. And I think if someone were to ask, well, what would have happened had he not had surgery? I don't think this was an example of where it was dangerous to the vision, but it would have left a uh, visible mark, and meaning that this is the type of mangium when it becomes raised and thickened, it's not likely to go away on its own, again, because it occurs on the head neck area. But look at the difference we made for this child by starting treatment early. So today is a very special day, um, May 15th, so please. Sure. Well, um, this is, uh, oh, these are some examples, again, of, of where the propranolol did not work, and these became surgical cases. And so what I always like to tell people is we certainly want to try all the treatments that we can first that you know, avoid surgery. We also want to recognize at an early enough time when it doesn't work, we need to stop the treatment that is not working and work our way into surgery. Now, surgery is not to be taken lightly, of course, and it's something that you know, is a very difficult decision for many parents. But I think it's very important to understand that surgery is just as valuable. And that once a child reaches uh, five or six months of age, there's no greater risk of the, of the child undergoing anesthesia or any other procedure than any other child in the normal community. Now, you asked about what is special about today. So today, I just want to recognize the efforts of the Vascular Birth Foundation. Uh, it's led by Linda Shannon, who's the president and founder. And for over 20 years, they've been networking children uh, into uh, treatment with uh, birthmark specialists. But more importantly is they um, actually petitioned Congress and today, May 15th, is an international day of awareness for all children with vascular birthmarks, both for seeking out treatment and acceptance uh, for having a, a visible birthmark. And uh, we like to encourage other families and their friends to recognize these children uh, for what they have, that these are benign conditions, but more importantly, they are treatable. And if they ever see anyone else on the street in a grocery store, you know, there's not anything that they should be concerned about, but they certainly want to encourage them to seek out a specialist for treatment. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much.